Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're jumping into a fourth grade topic find the area of your parallelogram. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use it to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today or even on homework, you can always visit my Facebook page at Timmy Senpai and tell me all about it there. This video is going to have two parts, so leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and let's get started. So today we're going to be finding the area of our parallelogram, and we're going to start with the formula for the area for our parallelogram. And that's going to be A equals B times H. Area equals base times height. This is going to be our formula when we try to find the area of our parallelograms. Now, what is base and what is height? Well, base is going to be very easy. Base is going to be any one of your sides of your parallelogram. You pick a side and that can be the base. The kicker is your height. Your height is kind of choosy. So you can't just pick anything to be your height. Actually, none of the sides of these parallelograms will be your height. Your height has to be perpendicular to the base you choose. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that if you choose a base that's like this, your height has to go up. If you choose a base that looks like that, your height has to go out. If you choose a base that looks like this, your height has to go out. It has to be perpendicular to the base you choose. So that may restrict you in which bases are available to you, which sides can be bases. So we're gonna look at these four different parallelograms and try to determine which side is the base based on what height makes sense. So looking at number one, which side do you think we should choose to be the base? Well, is it going to be five feet? Is it gonna be this side here? Is that gonna be a good base? Well, let's say if we chose five, do we know what the height is? Do we have anything that's going to tell us what this is going from five feet to the other side of this parallelogram? Do we know that distance? No. There's nothing here that lets us know what the perpendicular distance is from five feet. So we probably don't want to choose that one. How about this four feet here? Is this our base? Well, no, that's not gonna be our base because this is actually not a side on a parallelogram. When you see something like this, which has a dotted line here, this is showing you it's not really part of your parallelogram. This dotted line is like an imaginary line that's not really part of the whole shape. So because it's not even a part of the parallelogram, we can't say that this is going to be a side of the parallelogram and your base has to be one of the sides. So that can't be our base, which leaves six feet as our base, which works out. Because do we have anything that's perpendicular to six feet? Yes, this four feet here is perpendicular to your six feet. So that can be our height if we choose this to be the base. And remember, your area formula is going to be base times height. So if our B is going to be six feet, and our height is going to be four feet, we now have what we need to plug into our area formula. So what's going to be base times height for our first parallelogram at least? Area is going to be six feet, that's our base, times four feet, which is our height, which gives us what? Six times four is 24. And your units, because this is area, you need to end with square units. So it's feet squared. So it's gonna be 24 feet squared. Once you determine your base and your height, all you have to do is plug it into your formula. So let's move on to number two. We already found the area for our first parallelogram. Let's find the area for our second one. So this was 24 feet squared. How about this? 
which side is going to be our base? We want our base and our height. Well, does it make sense for our eight inches to be the base? Do we have anything perpendicular that's going to tell us what our height would be? No, nothing here is perpendicular, so we don't have a height from this side. How about the seven inches? Once again, this is a dotted line. It's not really part of this parallelogram. It's not a side of this shape. So we can't use that as the base. We can't use it as a base, which leaves us with nine inches. So nine inches, I'm gonna move this over. Our base is nine inches, which means that our height should be this thing that's perpendicular. So our height is seven inches. Now my drawing may not be absolutely perfect, but you see that there is a line that's supposed to be perpendicular to this base. So that's gonna be our height and this is going to be our base. And we now know what we need for our formula. So once again, our area is going to be base nine inches times height seven inches. And what's nine times seven? Nine times seven is 63. And do you end with just inches? No, you need to have square units. So that's 63 inches squared. Once you have your base and your height, plug it back into your formula and you will get 63 inches squared. So we found the area for our second parallelogram. So our A was 63, well, let's move this down a little bit so we can keep that. Our A is 63 inches squared squared. Now we want to move on to number three. But actually, before we move on to number three, what do we notice different from number one and our number two? Well, number one, we had the base at the bottom. Did you have your base at the bottom for number two? No, it was actually on the side. In fact, your bottom was a point, and that's perfectly okay. Your base doesn't have to be at the bottom. It doesn't have to be on the top. It can be on the side. It doesn't matter as long as you have a perpendicular dotted line, that's going to determine what your base would be. So it doesn't matter where your base is, find your perpendicular line. Now let's move on to number three. What is going to be our base? Now you may already have a clue based on our dotted line. You see this 10 yards, it doesn't have a dotted line that's perpendicular to it. So we don't want to use that as our base. So our base has to be this because we can't use the dotted line. So it's gonna be six yards. Our height has to be the dotted line, which is eight yards. Now we have both our height and our base. Let's plug it into our formula once again. Base, six yards times height, eight yards. When we multiply all of that together, what do we get? Six yards times eight yards is 48 yards squared, 48 yards squared. So once again, don't fall into the trap of using the wrong base. Find your dotted line and see what it's perpendicular to. This is not a valid base for this question. Our height is not determined by this base, but this base. And notice it's also a little different from our first two parallelograms. Now what's different about it? We found our base and our height the same kind of way, but what's different about this one? So the area was 48 yards squared. Notice your base that you chose in this case was actually the smaller side. In both of these, the base was the larger side of our parallelogram, but your base here was smaller which is perfectly fine as well. You don't need to have the biggest side of your parallelogram to be the base. It can be the smaller side. So we've tackled these three parallelograms. Let's move on to our last one, number four. Do we know what the base is and do we know what the height is? So let's say our base is this, our height is what? Base, is that gonna be it? Not quite. Is this gonna be it? Well, it should be, but how do we know it is? Well, if you were to extend this out, now notice this is a dotted line, it doesn't exist. 
This is not part of the parallelogram. But if you were to extend this out, you would find a line that's perpendicular to it. This is our height, and it's perpendicular to this line if you were to extend it out. So this is indeed our base, seven meters, and our height is going to be this three meters. Now this is perfectly okay. I know this looks a little bit different from the other ones. Your height can technically be outside of the parallelogram. And that's because the height is not really part of the parallelogram. Remember, these are dotted lines. They're not existing inside your shape. So it doesn't matter if it's inside or out the shape, as long as it's perpendicular to one of your sides, it can be your height. So now that we have our base and our height, let's plug it in. Area equals base, seven meters, times height, three meters, and that equals 21 meters squared. 21 meters squared. Once you have your base and your height, plug it in and you'll find your area. So I wanted to give you a quick view on how different your parallelograms may look, but they're still saying the same thing. As long as you know what you're looking for, you can still find the area for all of these parallelograms. It doesn't matter if your base is at the bottom, at the top, at the side, whether it's the bigger side or the smaller side, whether your height is inside your parallelogram or outside, you can still find the area for your parallelogram. So now that we've talked about how to use the formula, let's jump into a quick demonstration on why this formula works the way it does. So we have a nice easy formula for finding the area of our parallelogram, but why does it work? We don't have length and width, but we still are able to find our area using something like height and base. Why does this work? Well, why can't we even use length and width? It looks like a rectangle, so why can't we use that? Your length and width are actually gonna be reserved for your parallelograms that have right angles. For example, your rectangle. It has right angles all the way around, so you can use your length and width. However, when you don't have right angles, you can't use length and width, but we still have height and base. But that doesn't answer why it works. Why does height and base still work to find our area? The answer is going to be quite simple, actually. Your height and base are kind of working like length times width. And you would see that very easily if you were to move a small section of your parallelogram somewhere else on your parallelogram. So I'm going to take the small little section over here. The small little section, I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to keep some of this height. This height doesn't exist. This is a parallelogram, once again, it doesn't have that height as part of it. But I'm gonna take some of this height and I'm gonna relocate this triangle all the way over here. I'm gonna just overwrite where the other diagonal was, right? Overwrite it. And when I do that, what do you get? What does this look like now? Does it still look like your original parallelogram? Not quite. Have we lost any area? Not at all. I took that section and just simply put it over here. This overlapped, so we have the same exact area. But this now looks like a rectangle. And if you think about it, your length and your width had to be adjacent or perpendicular to each other, which is exactly what your height and base are doing. So you're kind of doing length times width, except you don't really have length and width to work with. But that's why it works. It's the same type of formula. You're taking two sides that are perpendicular to each other, and you're finding the area like you would for a rectangle. So that's kind of what's happening behind the scenes. A little magical, but you can see it very easily if you were to just relocate part of your parallelogram. So I hope you were able to follow along with today's video. And I hope you now understand how to use your formula to find the area of your parallelogram. However, if you have any questions about what we saw today or even your own homework, you can always visit my Facebook page at Tumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found a video helpful. And if you found a video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share the video with a friend. What is all the time I have for today? I'm really hoping this helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. 
I'm Courtney, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Senpai.